Good morning. Welcome to the Mentored Engineer. Today we're going to be discussing our log splitter's main beam. This is the beam that will take all of the load when you're actually splitting wood. So we want to make sure that we have a uh, good setup of the, the, how that's loaded and we make sure it's strong enough. So the first part of this video will be uh, setting up the free body diagrams and determining all of our loads and equations. All right, let's get started. So if I have my log splitter and I've got a plate here and a beam that comes across and then I've got my knife here then I have my cylinder here that I'll push up against the wall and it's attached to a uh, plate that is fixed for moving up and down Alright, so uh, this restraint prevents it from moving up and down, it allows it to go in and out, and it allows it to pivot. Now this plate actually won't pivot because it's attached to the end of the cylinder in a fixed manner, so we're, we'll need to be cautious of that uh, when we're setting up our free body diagrams. So here, let's just say we have a unique piece of wood, and it's cut in such a way that it's offset, it's uh, off uh, it's not perpendicular cuts all right and it hits the top of the knife blade and the bottom of the cylinder and this actually will be uh, a fairly common occurrence where the the ends aren't exactly perpendicular we need to make sure that we're uh, taking account of that all right so what happens here is this log becomes essentially a uh, two force member uh, if you think like a uh, rope that's a two-force member because it can only pull along its axis. So our log can only be split across from those two uh, with with a force through those two points. All right. Now let's let's uh, start looking at uh, what's going on here. The uh, we have a force of a cylinder here. And that's pushing there and pushing back here, and we have an angle. And we could easily calculate or measure that angle. All right, but our, I'm going to call this force C, and this one uh, force D. All right, the magnitudes of those are going to be uh, FC equals F cylinder over the cosine of theta and FD is going to equal F cylinder times the tangent of theta. And now we should get just from basic geometry. Uh, so you can go in and uh, just sum your forces at that point and get that. All right, now let's look at what else is going on here in a free body diagram. So we're just going to include our log splitter. We're not going to include the cylinder or the log this time. You now we're going to just start putting in uh, some forces here. So we got our force here. We have our force of the cylinder there. Uh, as a result we have the force uh, D, I use lowercase d, up we will have the force of our cylinder here. All right, is that it? Actually, there's one more. Right here, we have something interesting going on. We have the force of the cylinder pushing out on the center line, and we have a force of the cylinder pushing back there. And basically, we have a distance there, I'm gonna call it B that uh, are uh, that, that we're, we're creating a couple all right so we actually have um, a moment here and I'm gonna call this the offset moment all right and that's just going to equal force of the cylinder I'm sorry I drew the sign of that wrong it's going to be going this way times B all right, 
if we wanted to look at that, it would be force the cylinder and then force the cylinder and this would be the dimension B. All right, so that's how we would we could draw it here as well. So these two separated by B equals this. All right. So next, I got to specify uh, what I want to look at, and I can see from this that uh, we, we've uh, I've done similar things enough times that no matter how long this beam is, the load on it will not change because the forces are because of an eccentricity. All right. This one, however, does change by the load. So if I multiply that times this length, uh, I get a moment. And the moment is smaller if I look here and bigger if I look back here. Since our log splitter is essentially a uniform cross section, I want to look right here, right before it goes into the knife blade. And I'm going to call that section AA. All right. So I'm going to specify a couple dimensions here. Here's L. And I'm going to specify between the center line of the cylinder and the centroid of my beam, distance E, the eccentricity. All right. And from this, I can start writing some equations. All right. Now, I'm going to sum forces and sum the moments, but I'm going to do it uh, looking this way only and just saying this is a fixed beam right here and ignoring everything on this side. Okay. So when I do that, some of the forces on the X and that equals, I've got one, two, three. All right. But this one cancels out that one. So we're just have force of the cylinder moving in the X direction. All right. In the Y direction, I have force down. Oh, and I didn't specify my coordinate system. So just to make everything turn out positive, I'm going to say that's X and that's Y. All right. I like to keep my forces, I remember my resultant forces positive. So if you can easily see that having a certain coordinate system will uh, give you that, go ahead and set it up like that. All right. And then my moment, I'm going to call it my moment at A. And that's going to equal, all right, and got force of cylinder times E. All right, and I can recognize this as a couple, and that'll be minus uh, the force of the cylinder times B. And then I'm going to add the force of D times L. All right, so I've got. This one going this way, these two going the opposite way, and this one, the top force going uh, that way. All right, so we could simplify this, but uh, I don't see a need to right now. All right, so we're going to look at our, our large governing equation looking for stress. Uh, so if this uh, beam is not a symmetrical cross section, we're going to have to look both at the top and the bottom. All right, so our normal stress is going to be defined as moment at A times C over I. And since the top part is tension and the bottom part is compression, we're going to have to look at both the plus and the minus there. All right, we're also going to have to add in the axial component, which is the force of the cylinder divided by the area. Okay, so that's our governing normal stress equation. We'll have to look at two cases of it uh, to make sure that we have the worst case. Our shear stress, and this is going to be a very small component because it is uh, just a, a small shear force. We're probably looking at uh, you know one to two thousand pounds uh, over a fairly large area. So we're probably only going to end up with two hundred to three hundred psi. Uh, but we'll calculate it anyway. All right, so that's going to be the force of force that's downward times the area, or divided by the area. Sorry. All right, and that's going to give us our two basic equations. 
that we will need to figure out the stress at those points. Now as I mentioned earlier, if we move A this way, uh, we're going to uh, see this force component uh, get smaller and smaller. And as we go here, we should see no change between here and the end of it right there. So as long as we have um, a good understanding of our free body diagram, we should be able to calculate this very easily. And we will do that in the next video. Well, I hope this has been informative to you and that you are able to understand this. Uh, we, uh, I'm excited to get to the, uh, the actual calculation and we can show you how to do that in the next video. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.